How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and I wanted to do this sort of update video on the FX9. Most of you know that I recently purchased an Alexa Mini LF and I've gotten a few questions asking whether or not I still use any of my Sony cameras at all. And the fact is, is that I bring the FX9 out on probably about 90% of my job simply because it's the right tool for the job. But lately I've been starting to struggle with some of the ergonomics when I'm on set. And considering how much money this camera has made me, I figured it was time to just bite the bullet and do things proper. So I ended up going with the Airy Pro set for the FX9. The set definitely isn't cheap. And I just wanted to walk through some of the differences and some of the struggling pains that I have with my current rig and how the new Airy Pro set will kind of help alleviate them. All right, so here are some of the issues that I'm currently running into. So right now I currently have a lot of wooden camera accessories uh, on my rig including the top plate, the NATO handle V2, as well as the viewfinder bracket. And I'm also using the Zacuto Z Finder for the actual viewfinder, uh, which I actually really like. And on the bottom here, I have the Zacuto VCT Pro, and as well as the iconic shape handle so that you can kind of reposition this grip arm as needed and just set the camera down. So I've been using the FX9 in this configuration for probably over two years. And my biggest kind of complaint with it is this viewfinder bracket. It just kind of sucks. Um, it uses a 15 mil rod out of the NATO handle. And most times it's just not able to support the weight of the viewfinder with the Zacuto Z Finder. So unless you're really cranking down this thumb screw, which I find I just really have to crank down, you can even probably see a few marks from me just getting fed up and just using the pliers and just kind of wrenching this down. A lot of times it just ends up kind of sagging down and it's just, again, I usually find myself just fighting this thing on set and it just is super, super annoying. Uh, one of my other big points of issue with this is this handle. And this handle is not my favorite. I used to like it, but I kind of now, I just kind of hate it. So for whatever reason, Wooden Camera um, implemented this feature to have the handle spin. And that's kind of helpful when you're kind of rocking in different configurations. So say you have a really front heavy camera and you have like a really big lens. It is kind of neat to be able to kind of unloosen this, which you can see me right now. I'm just again, fighting with it, because I have to wrench this down super tight. You can kind of unloosen this thumb screw here and then just kind of rotate this as you need. And obviously it kind of doesn't really work with this viewfinder bracket on. So um, it's, it's nice being able to quickly reposition this guy. Um, and there have been a few moments where it has actually come in handy. Um, the one example I can kind of think of is when I was filming like in the passenger seat of a car, kind of doing a docu style, coverage and I'm just sitting in the passenger seat filming the driver. It was kind of neat being able to reposition this handle um, as opposed to here. I'll just turn it to the side so then the, the view, that way the viewfinder is in the correct position and I'm just holding it as I'm the camera's kind of chilling in my lap. The issue I have with this handle is that when you do tighten down this thumb screw, um, it's really hard to get a really tight kind of lock. So as you can see, so I'll wrench this down. And to me, this feels pretty tight. This, I'm putting a, a pretty good amount of force and I can't, it's, it's, it's taking a tremendous amount of pressure for me to, to re really wrench this thing down. And as you can see, this thing still spins and it is not kind of secure at all. So I kind of have really grown to hate this handle. Um, I got it in the first place because I really liked having a quick release mechanism. So having my handle on a NATO so I can kind of quickly take it off and then pack it away into my case. So it kind of lowers the footprint in that manner, but I guess all of the kind of cons really outweigh the pros. So these two things, I'm definitely just excited to just, just get rid of, honestly. Another thing I'm looking to fix with this rig is the VCT at the bottom only has a rosette on one side. It would be really cool to have a rosette right on the uh, operator side so that you can kind of attach my own grip or anything like that. 
Um, otherwise, I usually have to attach some sort of moose bar to the 15 mil rails. And sometimes I just don't always want to do that. Sometimes I'm not always rocking 15 mil rails. So again, it would be nice to have a rosette on the other side. And quite honestly, um, I don't really use this as much as you think I would. It is nice having all my controls and being able to adjust everything here, but more often than not, I can just usually adjust everything just right on the camera as it's on the shoulder. So again, if I had the option, I would probably just sub this out for a, a proper camera grip anyway. So again, every, every user is different. And kind of the final thing that I'm looking to help alleviate is the lack of mounting options. So and right now I'm using the wooden camera top plate and this is a great top plate. I really actually like and enjoy using this top plate. It has a bunch of three eighths and quarter inch mounting points all over the top, as well as the side of the top plate. And also I really enjoy that it has kind of a uh, console uh, 15 mil rail option right at the kind of front of the top plate. More often than not, I have to attach things like video transmitters and audio accessories. And I usually like mounting those to the side of the camera. And with this current rig, there's kind of no real way for me to do that. Um, you could probably put like a tiny piece of dual lock like right here, but other than that, that's pretty much it. So I usually like keeping the top clear for things like a Teradek MDR or other camera accessories and mounting all the extra stuff on the side. All right, so let's get into the Airy Pro set. Um, so here we have the top plate, and this is also the viewfinder bracket. So I really like Airy's design philosophy when it comes to viewfinders. And what you'll usually find is two 15 mil rails coming out of the front, and then one 19 mil rail that actually holds the viewfinder here. So this is gonna be a much more stable and solid solution. Um, that will be able to carry the weight of the viewfinder and the Z finder. Here you just have the center channel for the top plate. And so they give you options whether or not you want to use the top handle, the Sony top handle. I usually just always skip it because all you really lose out on is a zoom rocker and record button. And it's not the end of the world for me. There's a record button right on top of the camera anyway. And I don't really use Sony servo lenses other than the 28 to 135. And more often than not, I'm just manually adjusting the lens. This is the sliding adapter for the top handle. So the nice thing about this set is that I'll still be able to quickly remove the top handle and kind of stow it away when I'm packing it away into my case. I'm not gonna have that issue where it's just the handles forever rotating without really, really wrenching it down. So this is the top handle here and it's kind of a closed loop. So this design is really nice, especially if you're using easy rig. So the back is closed. So you don't have that paranoia of the easy rig clamp just slipping off of you. But also the nice thing is that I'll have plenty of mounting points on the top. So with the new easy rig quick release, I can just mount one of the bolts, the quick release bolts to the top here. And if I need to make a quick adjustment, the nice thing about this is that I can just slide the top handle as needed to adjust the center of balance. This is the base plate. So it's a standard VCT and it also comes with a kind of adapter lens support. So if you're using something like a Vocus PL mount or a wooden camera PL mount, you can actually use this to kind of really bolt it down directly to the base plate and just have a super solid connection. So um, I'll be using this when I'm using my PL lenses and I'll probably skip it when I'm using my native Sony E-mount glass. And again, I really like this base plate because it's kind of custom fit for the camera and also to we have rosettes on both sides, so I can attach my own grips and have a kind of more solid solution when I'm doing handheld shoulder work. 15 mil rods, standard. So the nice thing is that this kit comes with an RMB. So, so basically all it is is a rod mounting bracket that you can just put wherever you want for lens motors or additional accessories. And this can go on pretty much anywhere you want. So this is the side bracket for the operator side of the camera. So this one's a little bit weird because it doesn't actually have any mounting points. So I'm pretty sure Airy just included this to help offset the weight from the side bracket on the other side of the camera. Um, and it does give you a little bit more protection on the actual camera body, but there aren't actually any mounting points on this. Um, so yeah, it is a little bit weird. So this is the side bracket for the right side of the camera, and this has your traditional mounting points right here. So again, I'll usually add my audio accessories. So if 
I'm working with a sound person and they're sending me a hop or whatever, I can mount it just directly to the side of the camera. And this will also be really nice for when I'm using video transmitters. I usually like leaving those tucked away on the side of the camera. And that is about it. So another thing that's really nice about this base plate is that you can remove this wedge piece right here and then just mount this using a traditional bridge plate and just rock it that way if you wanted to. So again, this top plate is kind of set up in two different sections and most top plates usually are. You have the center channel and that just slots in right into here for when you don't want to use the top handle. Or if you do want to use the top handle, you can just take it off and mount it this way and use the original stock Sony handle. Or if you wanted a really kind of compact solution, you could just mount it using the center channel. So if you're doing gimbal stuff or just really want the footprint to be super small, you can just use this right here. So for me, I usually prefer having the added versatility of all the additional mounting points, both on the top plate and also on the top handle here, as opposed to having the start stop and zoom rocker on the, on the original Sony handle. You also lose out on the multi-shoe interface, which you can use the Sony's audio thingamajig, whatever. I've never used it and I've never seen any other sound person use it. So I really have no desire to hang on to that. So again, that's why I kind of decide to go with um, losing that handle and just going all with the additional mounting points. So again, big fan of this top handle because it does have the closed loop and I'm also able to just drop this right in tighten this and I have a super, super secure top handle. And I think my biggest takeaway is that I'm not gonna be fighting this rotating top handle that I just have to really wrench down just not to rotate. And again, I can loosen this and I can slide this for a better kind of center of balance position. And it does have a kind of safety catch too so that it just won't slide right off the camera. Already, it just feels so much more solid. It's it's super weird to convey over video, but anytime you hold something that's made by Airy, it just feels super, super solid and super well built. Um, and already, it feels 10 times more solid than it ever did using any of my other camera accessories. So already super happy with it. Another kind of nice small benefit of this viewfinder bracket is this nice wide thumb screw here so I can get a really nice tight lock there. So now this thing isn't moving anywhere. There is absolutely no chance I would have been able to do that with this wooden camera viewfinder bracket. It's especially nice when I'm making quick adjustments to the actual angle of the viewfinder. So if I'm putting my eye up to the eyepiece and then I quickly step away and I want to look at the monitor, I'll usually kind of tilt it up towards me and flip this open. And as this hinges out, there's a lot of kind of added weight towards the front of the viewfinder bracket. And as you can see, it's just, it holds super well. And if I wanted to make an adjustment on this arm, I only needed to loosen it just a little bit and I can still kind of move it around and there still be enough tension to make my adjustments. This is the RMB, and again, these are just nice to put anywhere for literally anything else that you want that uses a 15 mil rail. Um, you can also just take out the reduction insert and then just use a 19 mil rail, which is what I've been using more so lately, just because of the kind of wider diameter, get a little bit more bite 
to the actual rod. So this is nice for focus motors or if I've, you know, again, any other additional accessories that I need to mount towards the rear of the camera. So one of the last pieces is this tiny little peel mount support. And so it also includes a bracket in case your peel mount adapter is offset. But since I'm using the wooden camera support, I'll just take off this bracket and then just use it like so. Screw this into the bottom channel and then this will just lock, help secure and lock this right to the camera body. So here's the complete build. It's basically got all of the RE stuff on it. The battery plate I'm using is from Wooden Camera and it's what I've been using for the past few years. It's okay. Um, I do like that it can kind of slide around and you can still use the internal battery. So a lot of times I'll use this, I'll kind of leave a battery in the chamber and then that way with this plugged in, I'm able to just hot swap these gold mount batteries as I need to without actually turning off the camera. This camera still boots up in probably about five seconds. So it's not like it takes a very long time for it to boot anyway, but it is nice being able to hot swap these batteries. My only issue with this battery plate is that it, for whatever reason, my units are like a little bit noisy. When I attach a battery to it, I can usually hear this weird kind of hum, I guess you could say. And it is definitely noticeable to me, especially when my ear is right up next to the camera. And I don't know why it's audible, but I don't know if anyone else experiences that issue too, but that's probably my only complaint with these battery plates from one camera. I will miss the sliding plate on the VCT Pro on the Zacuto base plate. Um, it was really nice being able to quickly adjust my center of balance here. With on the Airy VCT, there isn't really, it doesn't really slide around. So you're kind of locked in on this VCT position. Normally I like the lens mount to be kind of right at the shoulder. And with here, it's obviously much farther forward. Um, it's a fair bit in front of the shoulder. So ideally the lens mount would be sitting a fair bit amount back um, to get a really good balance with the lens. So that just means you'll have to kind of offset that with more weight on the back using stuff like a shark fin, C box or a D box. And you'll just kind of have to be a little bit more mindful about your balance point. One thing I do wish RA did was offer some sort of CBP for other cameras other than the Alexas. So obviously this is kind of a VCT and this is a standard that you see on most kind of run and gun or dock cams. But on most Alexa builds, you'll usually find this base plate, which is the CBP. And on their newer ones, it's really nice because it uses a dovetail standard. And the nice thing about this is that you can just drop it straight onto the dovetail without having to slide it back from the rear or from the front. You can just release it straight off directly from the dovetail. I usually prefer using dovetails because it's a lot easier to balance. So again, depending on what lens I'm using, how many batteries I have on, or the camera build itself, I can quickly reposition and get it quickly balanced on the tripod. So a few other thoughts. I really wish that Sony had made this viewfinder either detachable or much, much longer, because usually I'll find myself wanting to fly the viewfinder really, really far out in front of me. Um, so that way I'm not cranking my neck when the camera's on my shoulder. You know, again, it's a small thing, but I really, really, really dislike the length of this cable. And speaking on the viewfinder, it's dog shit. Uh, I never, never, ever trust this monitor in terms of color. I actually find myself struggling a lot when I'm using something like Cinetone because the color on this monitor is so bad. I'll shoot something and then pull it into the computer and then it just looks completely off from what I saw. And that's because this viewfinder is dog shit. So again, make sure that you're using a properly calibrated monitor. Another kind of off topic thing that I wanna mention is that for whatever reason, this camera still can't output a monitor LUT when you're shooting in 1080p, which is so, so annoying. Oftentimes um, asked to shoot 1080p to help save space or for whatever reason the client wants. And oftentimes it's not a problem except for monitoring externally. So. I'll have to use the monitor LUT on my 17 inch monitor or some other solution to help view in Rec. 709 for the client. I'm perfectly fine with monitoring log, but I don't necessarily wanna show that to the client. And that still just boggles my mind with how powerful this camera is.
You could probably source out a lot of similar parts through other companies like Small Rig or Zakuto, but again, I've come to really enjoy RE's design philosophy with a lot of their products, so that's why I decided to go with them. Again, with how much money this camera has made me, it just made sense to reinvest that back into the camera since it's done a lot for my career. And the nice thing about having two FX9s is that I had to buy a second set just for that camera. So I'll be first to admit that Airy products definitely have a steep price tag, but I can definitely say that it is definitely worth it. So really quick, before I let you go, I wanted to show you how I've kind of configured my Pelican case. So this case was designed to hold both camera packages at the same time, because a lot of times I'm doing two camera interviews and I'll just show up and I just want one case that carries kind of both of my cameras. So this is kind of how I configured it using all of the Airy PCA camera accessories. So down here at the bottom, we have the two camera bodies and they fit perfectly. And the nice thing about this is that there's still room in the front here um, to leave a lens adapter if you wanted to. So theoretically, I could leave a PL mount lens adapter here because there's still enough room right here at the top. And I can just slot that in and leave it built onto the camera. And the thought process was right above the camera, I have kind of all of the corresponding accessories for each camera package. So right here on the left, I have the top handle. Here I have some handles, uh, rosette handles, in case I don't want to use the stock grip. Down here I have card reader and media. And then to the right of that, I have the AC power, which I often use whenever I'm doing longer takes, such as interviews. The nice thing about this is that I can just take the top handle as I'm building the camera, slot this right into the sliding pate, and then pull the camera right out and dock that onto the tripod or wherever else I'm building the camera. And when I'm putting it back, slot it back in, unscrew this thumb screw, and goes right into there. On the top right of the case, I have uh, both of the viewfinders with the Zakuto Z finders attached. So they're just kind of going opposite ends just right here. And they're pretty snug, so they're not really going to be moving around all that much. I originally wanted to divide them a little bit, but space was kind of tight, so that's how I kind of found this diagonal configuration. Right here is the stock arm grip with the shape handle. So I usually leave this in for whatever I'm, I'm renting out this package, because people usually like using this uh, for whatever they need, so it's a nice option to have. And below that, I just have the 15 millimeter rods that came with the uh, area accessory kit. So in case you're running extra accessories, like a follow focus or whatever, you can use those as well. To the right of that, I have the viewfinder bracket. And so these kind of neatly stack on one another so they don't take up too much extra space within the case. So just like that, kind of nice and tidy. And then down here, I just have the spare parts. So these are all the extra bits and bobs that I ended up not using or taking off and these are things that I don't necessarily need, um, but I did want to include with each camera package. So like this is the uh, lens support bracket and some extra screws that I took out from the top handle, the um, Vocus E-mount uh, support ring for the PL adapter, and then also the uh, stock kind of shoulder pad here in case people want to um, remove the base plate and just for whatever reason mount this. But I don't foresee that happening a lot, but it's nice to just throw it in there just in case. And it's also nice being able to know where all of my spare parts are. So that's how I set up my Pelican 1610 to carry both of my camera packages. And I don't know about you, but to me, it's always super, super satisfying whenever you have a super well-organized truck pack case. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way. I know the Airy Pro set is super, super expensive and you're definitely paying that Airy tax for these accessories. But again, knowing how much money the FX9s have made me, it just kind of makes sense to reinvest into that camera a little bit. And especially lately, I've just been really, really struggling and just end up fighting the camera most of the time that I'm on set. So I'm really, really excited and looking forward to all these kind of ergonomic improvements. For me, I'm super obsessed with camera ergonomics, so I'm always looking for all the small ways to really improve functionality and just help me do my job better as a cinematographer. The camera is definitely heavier, but I think the trade-off is worth it. 
I'll leave a link to some of these parts down in the description below if you're interested in checking them out. If you have any other questions on this video or camera rigging in general, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. It's perfect. Oh my god. Uh, not, not my proudest moment. <laughs>